Hello, everyone. My name is Dane Duval, and I am with Nova Southeastern University. I am the Dementia Education Coordinator and the COVID Telehealth Lead for our Task Force on COVID and Telehealth during the pandemic. So today I'm going to discuss with a group of people that are helping others in senior living. So you could be working in assisted living, in memory care, skilled nursing facilities, or quite possibly in independent living. Or you could be working in home health or home care. Or you might possibly be a family member who is trying to help somebody um, that is older. And what we're trying to do is help these people understand how to do telehealth with their doctors. Anyway, uh, like I said, uh, Nova Southeastern University has the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program, which is funded by the federal government. This is a picture of me, and like I said, here are my qualifications. I am, first of all, a licensed massage therapist in the state of Florida, and enjoy that work, but I'm also a certified Alzheimer educator, and I'm nationally certified in, in that domain, and also I'm certified by the state of Florida to do, do to provide dementia education and training to uh, people living in senior care. So what we're going to do today is talk about the coronavirus and, and how we can help our family, friends, residents conduct a successful uh, video chat. That's what we'll call it instead of calling it telehealth because I know that a lot of us are accustomed to Zoom or FaceTime or Duo or different platforms. And so let's just call this a video chat with uh, your healthcare provider. And first I want you to understand that, that we want everyone to continue to uh, practice safe protocols. First of all, wearing a mask when in public. And if you don't have access to masks, which are you know provided everywhere, uh, but if not, and you're more comfortable wearing uh, a face covering of, of cloth, like a scarf or a bandana or something, please make sure that you're doing that in public. We've got empirical and uh, anecdotal and all kinds of scientific evidence that shows that um, everyone wearing masks uh, keeps the, the spread of COVID down. Um, also make sure we, we encourage hand washing. Um, and we realize that you can't always have access to, as to uh, a sink with water and soap. So make sure that you have hand sanitizers on your body, whether it's in your pocket or your purse. And if you're driving from place to place, um, when you get back into the car, I suggest always using hand sanitizer, put it in the door pocket uh, before you even take off your mask and sanitize your hands uh, and then remove your mask. And I always suggest putting it into a plastic baggie um, when you're in your car. Uh, which will continue to keep everyone safe. So that's something for, for everyone listening to this, but also to make sure that, that you're providing that for your residents or family members. So what we want to understand is that during COVID, we want you to understand that there's a lot of things that can be helpful to, uh, to ourselves and to others. So we want to impress upon you that everyone needs to continue with their regular doctor's visit. First, I'll tell you that all healthcare providers are, are being very careful in, in being able to protect everyone from COVID. So if you need to have an update for medical problems that don't require emergency departments, that's what we need to make sure that people are continuing these visits with the doctors. It could be for existing medical conditions or some that might change or worsen. It could be for something new that doesn't require going to the emergency room. Again, going to the doctor can sometimes freak people out. It could make people nervous during this time. First of all, that's getting ready to go, that it's sitting there, it's wondering, okay, is this a clean, safe place, which we know it is. But just to, to keep people's nerves calm, it's always good to find out if the doctor can see you virtually or have a have this video chat with you. So that's that's some of the few backgrounds on it, but also I want you to understand what can be done with telehealth that maybe you don't realize. Uh, urgent care can be taken care of. You don't necessarily have to go to the urgent care or to the doctor's office as long as it's not an emergency. If it's an emergency, please dial 911. Just like when you call the doctor, if they say is this is a true emergency, please hang up and dial 911. We can't stress that enough, and I'll go over that a little bit later, but there's been many times during COVID that people did not seek medical attention, which has led to a lot of people dying unnecessarily. Um, 
telehealth and the video chats with your doctors can also do a quick diagnosis. It could be a skin rash, it could be sinus infection, it could be an upset stomach, or it could be um, a flu, not COVID. So those are quickly done over a video chat. Your primary care physician will see you. I know that when I do my, my every four month labs, uh, I don't go to the doctor's office to get those results. There's no reason. All they're gonna do is go read down the list that I've already um, read down because I get access to my lab results. So why go to the doctor when you can dial them up on your computer, your cell phone, your iPad, or whatever you use um, that, that has a camera. So uh, it also helps uh, chronic conditions. You can manage chronic conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, other chronic conditions. Uh, also, it helps you to manage your medication, get your refills done. Um, what's really important during this time, we know that mental health concerns have, have risen uh, during the pandemic, and this is really good because you can actually have a one-on-one -on -one face to face with a healthcare, um, a, um, excuse me, a mental health provider uh, during this time of COVID, and especially for people that, that don't want to leave their home. And also, in case you need to see a specialist, you could have your first consult with the specialist, uh, and then anything that needs to be followed up, they might require that in, in person. So let's, let's go over how it will be easy for you to help prepare for the appointment. Uh, again, this is for people that will be assisting elders, whether they're in the home or if they're in a senior living community. So once you've contacted the doctor and you've set up a, a telehealth appointment, then make sure that you get uh, very important instructions on how you're going to connect. Sometimes it's downloading an app on your phone or on your tablet, or sometimes it's just uh, loading into uh, a website. They'll give you a link to the website. Um, also make sure that what's really good before the appointment is help your resident or your family member take down notes of things you want to discuss with the doctor. Uh, this is really helpful because a lot of times you forget. I know that whenever I make an appointment with my doctor, I always write down the things that I want to discuss with them. And sometimes you forget, but at least you've got a piece of paper in front of you. Um, and don't feel rushed. That, take the time that you need to see your doctor face-to-face -face on a computer or phone screen. Make sure that however you're connecting is working properly. Make sure that the camera, the speakers, the microphone or headset, whatever you're using to connect, make sure that that's um, all in working order. Uh, if you're use, using, and, and for that, the, the uh, doctor's office will give you where to um, connect, and usually they have a way of testing this, your apparatus before connecting for the live event. If you're using a smartphone or tablet, Make sure that you are in an area that has a strong Wi-Fi signal. You know, the, the worst thing you want to do is be all garbled where, you know, it becomes digitized or pixelated where the person is hard to see or their voice is wobbly. Make sure that that's strong enough. And also make sure that you've got enough battery power. Uh, you might also, if there's not a good Wi-Fi signal, you might want to make sure that you go through the mobile signal uh, and make sure that that's a good cellular signal as well. Always make sure to find a quiet space where the resident or client or family member can be on their own and won't be interrupted. Don't do it in the, the community room. Don't do it in the TV room. Don't do it in the, the dining hall. Make sure that it's private because this is sensitive healthcare information that other people have no business and do not have the right uh, to breach the privacy between um, the, the client. I'll go over this later, but also make sure um, that, that if you're assisting the resident that you let the doctor know that you're actually sitting in on the appointment and that the patient has given permission for you to be there. Um, but anyway, make sure that you're not interrupted and that, that it's quiet. Make sure that the, the camera is at eye level. That is hugely important because what's going to happen is the doctor needs to see you, uh, the patient. Uh, another helpful to hit is that make sure that there's lighting in front of the patient and not behind them. For instance, don't sit someone in front of an open window. If, they're, if you have to be in front of a window, make sure that the drapes are or the blinds are closed and make sure that there's a good light coming from in front. Um, also, make sure that the, uh, your resident or patient 
has loose clothing because the doctor might need to see if there's a rash or a new bump, if something needs to be seen on the abdomen, um, they need to be able to see it. So you don't want them all with tucked in clothes and something tight. They might need to show something on their leg where there might be a lesion or it could be something relative to diabetes that's new or that needs to be checked up. So make sure that, that the, the, the clothing is loose so that the doctor, if he needs to see, uh, he or she needs to see the patient, uh, they have on proper clothing for that. Now during the appointment, so you've set it all up, you've tested all your equipment, um, you're going to probably be in a waiting room. I'll, I'll show you that in, uh, in a step-by-step -step coming up, but just like being at the doctor's office, you will be in a waiting room waiting for the doctor. But when the doctor appears on the screen, um, again, make sure that you inform the doctor or the healthcare provider that you are helping your resident uh, with the appointment and that they make sure that the, uh, the, the resident tells the doctor that they've given verbal uh, permission for you to sit in on the appointment. Um, another good thing to do, again, I was talking about the lighting. Um, if at any point the doctor says, well, you know what, this is more complicated than we can do over the computer or phone, I'm gonna need to see you. So help set up that appointment. And the doctor sometimes will make that appointment or they might say, would you please call uh, into the office and, and make an appointment as soon as possible and I'll let them know that, um, that you're going to be calling. Don't forget, if you're not able to connect with that person who makes the appointment while you're talking to the doctor or he can't make the, the doctor's appointment, then make sure that uh, you call right away. So other things to think about, don't forget to get your prescriptions refilled. Uh, the doctor will, you know, send the prescription to the pharmacy. However, whatever pharmacy they have on file for you, that's where the prescription is going to go. You know, the doctors don't write prescriptions anymore. They, everything is sent over electronically, but make sure that the doctor's office has the current pharmacy that you're going to, the, the resident uh, utilizes, and especially if they're going to be delivered, they may, the, the pharmacy that they send it to might not know, might not know where uh, the patient is. Uh, make sure to make a follow-up appointment whenever the doctor says, I want to see the patient again in two months, or I see, need to see them uh, in a month, whatever, make sure that you make that follow-up appointment. And also, if there's, uh, the doctor says, oh, you know what, that thing bothers me, the, the, what looks like a rash, I can't tell um, for sure. I'd like to, for you to go to see the dermatologist. Make sure that you get any details for that specialist appointment uh, and find out if you need to get a referral, if the healthcare program that they're uh, enrolled in requires a referral. Um, but make sure you get all the details of what doctor uh, um, is being recommended. If there's any future lab work that needs to be scheduled, make sure that that is scheduled through the office. And also write down all the future appointments. These are all important things. We don't think about this because when we go to the doctor, we do all of this stuff, but when we're sitting in front of a computer screen, it might be different. It, you may forget things and then all of a sudden you don't show up for a future appointment if it hasn't been written down because you're not gonna get a little card from the receptionist out front. If your resident, the patient, is unclear on anything, have them ask questions or maybe even ask questions for them. Don't be rushed. Make sure that all of your notes are, have been gone over. Everything you've uh, previously discussed with the, the resident or client has definitely been covered by the doctor. And if there's anything unclear, make sure that the patient understands. And what's really important is get the answers then because what are you going to do? Wait for three months for the next appointment? It's very hard to call a doctor with a question. So as I mentioned, here are some step-by-steps of what uh, you're going to encounter in conducting your video chat with the doctor. First of all, if there's an app to download or a program, download it onto either your computer, your laptop, your um, iPad, your telephone, your iPhone, whatever you're using to connect with this, make sure that whatever the instructions they gave you, that you do. You can see here the patient has downloaded the app and he's getting ready to launch it on his iPad. From there, usually a few minutes, some, sometimes it's the day before, you never know when you're going to get either a text message usually or an email from the doctor's office and they'll say something like this, dear patient, your telehealth appointment is about to begin or it will begin on November the 19th at three o'clock in the afternoon. To begin your secure video chat with Dr. Applebaum, 
please click the link provided here. That link then you will click and it'll open up into the app or on the website or what, what have you. Um, just to let you know, this link is for example only and it's not a live link, so please don't copy it down and try to go to that uh, appointment uh, for today. So you'll click on that link and then you'll be opened into, and this is a, a actual picture of the iPad and showing this app happens to be called Men. That's what this doctor's office uses. And it'll ask you to um, connect to the video chat. Again, all the systems will look differently. Then the system is gonna ask you to co confirm your identity. Almost 100% of the time, it will be the patient date of birth. If it's not, it's probably with a passcode uh, that has been generated by the doctor's office or from uh, the service that you'll be using. And if it's that way, then you would uh, click on that and put that uh, password in. But I find that it's most always the, the date of birth of the patient. So then it's gonna also ask you to have access to your camera and microphone. Again, make sure that you've already tested this private uh, prior to the appointment so that you won't have any technical glitches when you're trying to, to log in. And I, I would suggest show up five minutes early. I would not show up any earlier than that. I have yet to find a doctor who is early for an appointment. So make sure that you have that all checked out prior to, but you never know there could be a, a technical difficulty. Your internet could be out, the doctor's internet could be out. Um, several things could be happening. Uh, and this gives you five minutes to, to resolve any of the issues. But again, I wouldn't show up more than five minutes in advance because then you're going into the waiting room just like is if you're in the doctor's office. The good thing is here, you're all by yourself. You can be listening to your own music, music have your own coffee. You're sitting there with, with people, um, you know, your residents or your clients that you can help uh, go through this. You can have a chit chat while you're waiting for the doctor. Then all of a sudden make sure that all of these steps have been done before your appointment time. And then magically the doctor appears. You can see the doctor in the large screen on, on this image. Uh, he's actually in his doctor's office. Uh, some, some people have, uh, some uh, private uh, practices have decided that, that during office hours, some doctors might be working from home. It all depends, but regardless, they're still your doctor or your health, excuse me, healthcare provider. And so you'll start the video chat just like as if you're on, on Zoom or, or FaceTime. So, Talk to the doctor just like you would talk to him as if you're sitting, him or her. I'm sorry I keep saying him, it's, it's interesting. My, my, all, almost all of my doctors are female, but I think that we tend to, to think of doctors as being males. But um, anyway, I, I apologize for keep calling the doctor a he or him. Um, so there's some additional steps here that, that we wanna go through. And this is something we've kind of discussed, but I wanted to give you the step-by-step. -step. So if you are connecting through a laptop, a desktop, a telephone, an iPhone, an iPad, all of those could be going through your Wi-Fi. That's going to be the best signal for you to connect. Um, make sure that you use the correct app or connect to the appointment, however, the link that the doctor's office provided. Now, if you don't have access to Wi-Fi, could be, you could be working with someone in a home that doesn't have access to Wi-Fi, but you're using a smartphone or tablet that connect is uh, through cellular service, then you wanna make sure that you've got a good cellular connection. Um, and again, you'll go and connect the same way uh, through the link that they provide you. If you have technical difficulties, and I really should say when you have difficult, technical difficulties, make sure there's a backup plan. Um, I would suggest you know, asking the doctor's office when you make the appointment, if there's a problem, how can I reach the doctor? or make sure that the doctor's office has your cell phone number so that, that if, if for some reason during the appointment, everything goes blank, then the doctor can call the cell phone and they can continue the conversation with you and your resident or family member. Also, we want to discuss some of the platforms. I think I was telling you earlier that, that you could connect through different ways. I have had conversations with doctor's offices through FaceTime. They would just call my, tel my cell phone and it would be coming up FaceTime and I would accept and we would have the, the conversation and the appointment through FaceTime. These are the ones that are approved through, uh, through Medicare and Medicaid. It's FaceTime Duo, which is a, a product similar to FaceTime, but that's for Android users and for Google. Uh, you can use Facebook Messenger. 
uh, Google Meetings, which used to be called Google Hangouts, Zoom, and Skype. These are the, one, the approved ones. There are other things out there, but the, the secure lines are not secure. So we don't recommend using those. And most doctor's office know which things that they can use. But again, what could happen is you could be in the middle of uh, an appointment on your, um, on your laptop and then everything goes blank and then the doctor might call you and continue with Facebook Messenger or FaceTime. And not to worry if the people that you are helping do not have, and this would be mostly either family members or if you work in home health or home care and the, the client does not have a cell phone, doesn't have a computer, doesn't have Wi-Fi, then please tell the doctors that, that you need to have that virtual appointment via telephone, and that is perfectly acceptable. So here's some, some more information with some additional tips that I wanted to share with you guys. Make sure that the doctor has all of the updated info on the patient, and make sure that they have lab results, especially if the appointment is only to go over labs. If, if the lab results aren't there, then there's no point to the, to, to the conversation and to the appointment. Uh, also, make sure that, that you've gone over the notes and jotted them down. Um, and if, if you don't understand what they are, talk over with your resident or client to find out, okay, I'm not sure what this means. Can you explain? Because they may have made it a, a cryptic note that you need to understand better. So this will help you in, in facilitating the appointment with the, the healthcare provider. Also check and then double check your equipment. Make sure it's working. Test the systems that you're planning on having the appointment with. Again, have pen and paper ready so that that way you can jot down notes to go over with uh, the, the resident or client later. Especially a lot of times when, when there's uh, difficulty understanding something, maybe uh, the doctor is speaking in medical jargon. Uh, my advice then is to say, okay, got, doctor, could you explain that in people terms? Uh, and, if, and, and keep taking notes because then after the appointment, you can go over everything with your resident or client. Um, again, make sure that you're in a quiet area with no interruption. This is a private, conversation that it's protected by federal laws and we don't want other people hearing um, sensitive healthcare information and again have that backup plan because there probably will be some type of technical difficulty usually they're they're worked out but just still have that backup plan uh, a phone number to contact or making sure that the doctor's office has a cell phone to reach you so that you can conduct the conversation with the resident and the doctor this is very important medical information and I can't stress this enough. I mentioned it earlier, but there have been many people who have died during COVID that didn't need to die. They were afraid to dial 911, they were afraid to go to the doctor, they were afraid to go to the emergency department, they were afraid to go to the hospital, they were afraid to go to urgent care because they were afraid of COVID. People have died. That is unnecessary. Again, hospitals, all healthcare providers are doing their level best to make sure that you are protected from this disease when you visit their offices. However, that's being said, that's why we're going over this today because of the ease of care that can be conducted through these telehealth and uh, video chats. Please don't be that person and don't let your resident, your client, your family member be the person who didn't receive medical care because they were afraid of COVID. Again, all healthcare providers have made sure that their place is safe and that they are not going to spread COVID to their patients. And just for this little brief moment, I've put up a beautiful picture of a calm sea, blue skies, puffy clouds. And I just want everybody to just take time. I know that we're all stressed out during this time of COVID and the pandemic and many other things. I know that people are having a lot of people with emotional uh, distress and mental health problems right now. But just take a look at this. And, and right now, let's all take a deep breath and just take a deep breath in. Hold it for a second and breathe out. Let's do that again. A much bigger breath. Breathe in. Ah, and breathe out. And hopefully that will help you to de-stress. 
I want to thank you all for your attention today. This has been recorded and provided by Nova Southeastern University, the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program. And part of our deal with the federal government is that we uh, request everyone to complete a survey that has watched or uh, when I do this live, people also, well, we want people to, to take this survey. It's a very easy, simple survey. It's only six questions, very, six very short answers. Um, but so if you have an iPhone, get that out and turn it to your camera. Uh, it'll bring up this, um, this website, uh, Google and Android. You, you can also do the same thing. Also, um, if you don't want to do that, you can copy down this uh, website. Uh, and I'll leave that up for a while. You can copy down this. I know it's a long thing. Make sure you get all the letters. There is no space between the M and the three even though it's returned on the, the line there. Um, that'll take you to this very quick survey. Um, the presentation title, that's the first thing on the survey. If you'll put in there COVID module four, COVID module four, or, or you can write down the title of this presentation was assist residents clients with telehealth. Um, and there's just six quick questions. It's, it's about uh, how you perceive this um, presentation, if you've learned anything today, and also uh, other things that you might like to, to learn from other educational uh, prospects and offerings that we do at Nova Southeastern University. So again, I wanna thank you. My name is Dane Duvall, and here is my contact information. If you have any information you wanna share with me, or if you have questions, comments, anything, I'm, I'm glad to hear from you. Uh, again, I represent Nova Southeastern University, the Kiran C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine, the South Florida Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program, and, excuse me, Education Program. And if you would like to get in touch with us, here you are, my name is Dane, at daneduval.com is my email address. And I really thank you guys for your attention today and be safe and be well.